Welcome to the BIMSTORM live session webinar number one. This is Kimon Onuma from Onuma Inc. Today's session will run approximately one hour. It's a follow-up to last week's uh, session that we had on Monday last week, which we posted on the uh, BIMSTORM.com slash WAS website. So for anybody that missed the introduction, you can actually go back and watch that session if you'd like. BIMSTORM this year is sponsored by Onuma Inc., Balfour Beatty Construction, EcoBuild, Gary Technologies, Buxon Power, Infocom, Broadus Associates, Trelligence, and we have a new sp sponsor at the bronze level, VBN Architecture. The BIMSTORM has two um, themes this year. One of them is focused on healthcare, the other one on education. Uh, for healthcare, we have Kaiser Permanente. For education, we'll be focusing today on the Miracosta college project. We'll be giving an introduction on the workflows and the process that we'll be using in the BIMSTORM. There are multiple types of projects that are going to be part of this, um, all the way from early planning to life cycle facilities management and operations, and in the middle in design and construction. Today's focus is going to be on Miracosta, on uh, one project at Miracosta. Last week we covered a little bit more about the Kaiser Permanente projects. We'll be going over more in detail next week on the Kaiser Permanente projects, but the process that we're going to follow for those projects is going to be very similar to what I'm going to show today as well. This is the Kaiser project that's under construction right now, and there's also a new program for another project that's coming up as well too, a program requirement for a new Kaiser project as part of the BIM storm. I'd like to stress that all of these projects in the BIM storm are related to real projects that are going on, but they are, uh, the work that we're going to be doing in BIMSTORM is disconnected from the real project. There's no contract or requirement or anything. It's, it's voluntary uh, from all the teams and the owners submit their projects. There's no uh, fees paid to the owners or the other way around and teams are volunteering to learn how to go through this process and also to get exposure to the projects and the, that are going on to the owners. So today we're going to focus on the uh, BIMSTORM Education, uh, California Community Colleges. There's uh, over 112 locations with 5,000 buildings, uh, and uh, the, California, the Foundation for California Community Colleges needs to manage uh, these facilities and fund these facilities. So one of the facilities is going to be about the Miracosta College. And just to give you an overview of what, what's the, dri what the drivers are for projects in these uh, community colleges, as, as we all know, um, California, there's there's a lot of um, constraints right now with the budget, and that's similar anywhere else in the world as well too. So it's good, it's important to be efficient about how you go about planning projects, and the the demands don't change. The demographic data from their GIS system shows population shifts. Districts are in need of renovation of existing buildings or construction of new facilities. Uh, these facilities are, uh, there's planning proposals from the districts, uh, which we'll be showing today, a uh, proposal from each district saying we need a new um, athletic facility, for example. Three different districts, for example, say here are, here's the project requirements. They're submitted to the uh, Chancellor's Office through the Fusion system uh, to review uh, for uh, funding. These uh, proposals are in Fusion and uh, also the Onuma system. Uh, graphically, there are a building information model, so the, the requirement for a new building might look like something on the left side where it says here are all the spaces and the requirement and the uh, budget and the adjacencies and, and size of the space. That is handed, uh, and, and this BIM storm is going to be handed off to the uh, design teams as a BIM. They can, uh, the design teams can work in their tool of choice, uh, Revit, ARCHICAD, even SketchUp, um, other IFC compatible BIM applications. And then uh, the next step would be to submit the completed design back to the district. In this case, we're focusing on Miracosta, so you submit the completed model back to the district. And that'll be in a BIM format. The goal of this whole process is to be able to keep this data in a BIM format that can come back to the owner. So not just completing the building, but we want to have the data about the building. And we're going to keep it very simple in the beginning. For example, we want to make sure all the spaces that were funded in the initial program requirements are coming back 
in the design and that seems kind of a simplistic thing but that's obviously always a challenge to track spaces and sizes and and even as you get into more detail about the functionality of the spaces so that's what we'll go through today about how the BIM storm is going to start up that process as the projects are submitted back in the BIM storm we are actually going to be checking for uh, deltas to see what spaces are out of range and to be able to interact have the owners actually watch what's going on with the teams and that's a big theme of the BIM storm it's progressive development not milestone submittals but to be able to interact uh, on a more consistent basis with the owner um, so in this case we're checking to see what the delta is uh, of the project then the next uh, part of this would be when the project is complete to submit it back as an as-built to the district so Miracosta has a comprehensive master plan that's in draft format still and is accessible publicly on the web. It was completed by HMC out of Irvine along with a lot of other consultants and HMC is going to actually be acting as the owner's master planning architect in this BIM storm and help us review the projects as they come in. So it's actually the BIM storm in this case is actually related to a real thing that's happening at Miracosta. It's very, so it's very exciting for us to have HMC and Miracosta agreeing to be part of this. Um, and what we have done over the last few days is actually, or we started a little bit over a week ago, collecting background data. And even up until last night, we were getting updated information on the projects at Miracosta. And we'll be showing that today. So here's the Miracosta campus. I'll be showing this live in a second. Uh, the red buildings are new. We'll be focusing on two of those four red buildings and uh, some site-related uh, studies as well. So conceptually, what we're doing in the BIM storm is we have uh, spatial programming requirements on the left side, number one. Say the owner says, here's a list in Excel. We're importing those to the Onuma system. We're using the Onuma system as one of the model servers that's going to be used for collaboration among the teams. We're also going to be introducing Gary Te Technologies GTX server next week in more detail. That's going to be handling the detailed models. So these uh, requirement models from number one uh, actually are BIMs uh, going to be handed to the team. So you don't have to start from an Excel file. You'll actually have a BIM with all the spaces in it. And you can continue to do blocking and stacking in uh, the Onuma tools or other tools and then take it out to the other desktop BIM applications like Revit, ARCHICAD, Vectorworks, SketchUp, all the other IFC BIM applications and uh, continue the design work and even at, uh, collaborate with other teams that might go into more levels of detail. So there might be some teams that would go into the detailed design, for example, in the hospital for Kaiser, the medical centers. There might be some more detailed layouts of um, um, exam rooms or operating rooms, as one example. We want to allow teams to jump in at any point that they're interested in the process. It's not a linear thing where we're allowing you to just jump in and show what you can do and even collaborate with other teams. And this is an overall view of what happens. So we have program requirements. Uh, number three, owner saying, here's our program requirements. Number four, uh, we might go through iterations of this program, quick blocking and stacking and quick budgeting exercises in BIM, and then export that out to number five to the, to the more detailed design in the other BIM applications and go through multiple iterations with this. So it's not just a, a linear path, but to try different what-if scenarios with it and to be able to use a server to kind of track all of that back and compare things and we'll, we'll, we'll show a little bit more detail on that later on and to work with the dis different desktop tools okay so if there aren't any questions we'll go into the live session next and just to give you an overview of what's happening here in the next month We'll be uh, running uh, uh, go-to uh, webinars online. We'll be have, having collaboration online. And then in, in December at the EcoBuild conference, if you go to bimstorm.com, you'll actually see the links. Uh, we'll, we'll be gathering at EcoBuild, and we will have representatives from Kaiser Permanente as well as the uh, California Community Colleges, uh, uh, the Foundation for California Community Colleges, and the Chancellor's Office, and LACCD will be there at uh, the EcoBuild conference in Washington DC but it's not required for you to be there physically to participate in the BIM storm so you could spend as much as time as you want or as little as you want you might just want to watch what's going on we invite you to interact even for an hour or so to to see what this process is all about and to learn what other teams are doing and most importantly to learn what owners are looking for and give your input to that 
Okay, are there any questions before we switch over to the live session? We're okay? All right. So let's go back to the first thing I want to show you is the uh, the campus of the um, uh, Miracosta College. I'm opening up a, a live uh, website and everybody will get a link like this. This is actually a very simplified view of uh, uh, the uh, the Onuma system. And let's put this back here and just go back to this. Okay, so this is a web browser here um, that you can view on many different web browsers um, that shows the uh, campus at Miracosta, uh, the, the buildings, uh, the proposed buildings, and uh, the, uh, the site condition. The, um, the blue line is identifying an area that we're going to be focusing on in the BIMSTORM, the northeast side of the campus. Um, and the um, master plan from HMC has actually identified uh, which er areas uh, these new buildings are going to be coming in. So for example, if we go on the right side here and look at the comprehensive master plan, it actually opens up and you'll see uh, these buildings here. The red ones are actually the new proposed buildings. So the red is proposed. This is, uh, you can actually scroll in and out. There's interaction. You can click on things and bring up more information. So this is actually a live uh, web site that links to a model server that has live data about the projects. So the red buildings are, um, are the new ones. The, uh, the, 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 the blue line around here actually shows the, um, the area that we're going to be studying. And the athletics building, uh, project number four, is an athletics building, this red building right here. Underneath it, you see the old athletics building that's going to be that's scheduled to be uh, demolished, and uh, the red one is going to be the proposed one, and that this is the one that we're going to focus on today. Uh, we actually, um, from the HMC master plan, we identified this area here, um, and um, we also received program requirements uh, from HMC, and also from. Eric Middlestead, who manages a lot of the initial planning project proposal requirements for the community colleges in California. So I received this last night from Eric. I'm not sure if Eric is online right now, if he wants to say anything. Otherwise, I'll just uh, continue on through to show the, the document that was submitted uh, to us last night. This is a PDF file from Eric that shows what's called the instructional building number three, which is the building we were just looking at. And this is a typical initial planning proposal or initial project proposal that the community colleges use. Inside this document, there's information about the project, the budget and areas, and checklists about what the spaces are all about. And the most interesting part here for us is the program requirements. So this is kind of an outline of the, uh, it's called a JCAF, uh, whatever, the 33 or 31, I can't remember the numbers here, but let's see, the JCAF 31. And there's also a J, uh, cost summary that breaks down what the budget is for the project. So we'll be sharing this with the teams. If you, if you sign up for the BEMSTORM, you'll get access to all of this data and these documents. And you can see um, the areas that are being programmed. So this is a 37,000 square foot net building. These are all the net spaces that are being programmed. And there is information about budget and construction costs and equipment costs and the total uh, budget for the project actually starts showing up in some of these documents here. So this is a you know approximately a 20 million dollar project, a pretty straightforward project. It's uh, this many spaces, and you will see this a little bit more later. Okay, so is Hakop online by any chance? If not, I'll keep going. Okay, so this is the building, and what you can do with this simple interface, um, you can't edit anything in the simple interface. Basically, you can click on things and bring things up and look at different views, and I can hit the back, or even look at it in 3D, or I can look at it in, in the back button and actually zoom into this um, project um, for program blocking and stacking. So now we're zooming to the interior of the building. This is a very simplified model, but it actually has the same elements that we saw earlier in the IPP, the program requirement document. 
and just last night we quickly imported that into the Onuma BIM server and we are able to see all the spaces they were just scooted around just a quick blocking and stacking exercise the uh, line around here is the proposed gross area of the building so you'll see there's a lot of white space in between which would be the structure and the corridors and the bathrooms and and other things like that that would support this building this is up to the design teams to uh, to respond to so with this one too you can actually hit the 3d button and a 3d view in google earth zooms you in to the site so very simple kind of a view only access to the data and as you zoom into google earth you can actually see uh, the building and click on the spaces and it brings up information about the gymnasium and the dance studio and the classrooms etc this is all in BIM so we'll be able to pull this out into SketchUp or Revit or the other BIM applications we talked about earlier and just to give you a context of the site there's a pedestrian bridge leading to the main campus here so it's kind of an interesting site because the main campus is here and the uh, proposed buildings on the other side what's going to happen later on this week is uh, Deborah Shipley from HMC Architects is going to give us a more detailed overview and we'll, we'll be recording that session and posting it on the website give us some more detailed information about what the issues are with the or the opportunities and issues with this master plan the other maintenance facility building is actually going to go into this bowl here where there is a, a field that's not being used or is being uh, the use is being changed the fields are going to stay up here so there's going to be a new maintenance operations building here and there's going to be a project number three which is the solar PVs over the parking area so those are the, the three main projects uh, we're focusing on the gymnasium today and um, if we go back to the um, overall view so just to give you a little bit of navigation on the left side there are links to different files there's a live what do we call a live BIM view these are all the the floor plans so you can actually even go to the project number five and look at the maintenance operations building this one is not ready for release here we're still waiting for some updated information but we have the initial blocking and stacking of this building as well um, it's kind of a warehouse storage office space uh, receiving area in that bowl it's a very interesting site so it could be an interesting challenge for the teams to design to work on this as well and back to the navigation here so a very simple navigation back and forth drill down to any any of these uh, links here to see floor plans and site plans etc um, on the image link there is uh, if you hit the next button up here you actually see a group of images uh, some uh, from the master planning documents there's a maintenance operation uh, image from the HMC master planning documents and um, the instructional building 3 which is the building that we're looking at so this is kind of the initial massing that was developed in the master planning document so you can kind of see the concept here that there's the bridge there's some kind of connection back to the fields and other areas back there so the teams can take off from this and you'll hear more of this from uh, HMC later on uh, in the week uh, the comments section the button on the comments you'll see some narrative about the different buildings taken from the master planning document and if you scroll down here you actually see instructional building 3 which is the one we're focusing on today and there are preset links here where you can actually download different files directly from the model I just showed you so for example um, you can actually get a initial cost summary if you go to this link it actually launches a cost summary live from from the Onuma system we injected the data from Eric's IPP document uh, some initial cost estimate data here the next link down is a link for uh, a BIM XML for SketchUp. We'll show this a little bit later, but you can actually download the model, open it in SketchUp, Revit, or ArcCAD, or other BIM XML capable applications, Trelligence, for example. Uh, Kobe is for facility management. So these are all live, live data links that are available from the model. IFC for BIM, so you can actually create an IF, IFC file on the fly to import into other BIM applications. So that's kind of the basic starting point. We're saying that any team that starts with um, these projects is we want you to come to this site and you'll get a link to uh, the information um, that you're seeing here um, if you sign up. And from there you can download, uh, you can view, zoom in, zoom out, click on things, look at information live from the site plan. The significance of this as, as for those that have not 
been involved in a BIM storm before is we keep the data live so as new information gets updated these graphics are not static so for example if the location of this maintenance operation building gets shifted you'll see it as we shift it next week in fact there's some d discussion going on right now about how we're going to cite this because the gross area is actually larger than the footprint uh, that was estimated you will see that the yellow footprint below but as we start putting in the gross areas it's starting to overflow the site a little bit so we want to know can this go to a two-story facility or not? So we're going we're going through blocking and stacking exercises right now with the HMC team and with the Maricosta team. So that's the maintenance operation facility. Here is the uh, parking lot with the solar arrays. Um, you can actually click on things here and actually get information about this solar array, for example. Um, and there's other type of information directly from this plan as well. So for example, on the existing campus, you can even click on a single building and, and look at data about this particular building. It's showing the facility condition and the repair and the replacement costs. Live data coming from the Foundation for California Community Colleges that shows what the condition of this building is, the existing um, student center. It's showing the there's a lot of repair repairs that are needed. It has a two million dollars worth of scheduled repairs and it's showing energy conservation measures that are coming from an energy audit prepared by SC Engineering uh, report there. Okay and the same thing actually happens for the existing gymnasium. It's actually interesting to zoom in. We're proposing to replace the existing gym with this new one based on the master plan. If you click on the existing gym and you look at the repair cost, it has $6 million worth of repair scheduled with a replacement value of $10 million. I believe that's why it's actually scheduled to be a new project because there's more more than 50% repairs scheduled for this building and things that are failing in the building built in the 60s uh, that should be um, looked at. So a new building is being proposed and even in the engineering report there's recommendations for uh, changing uh, heating and ventilating system. So the question is do we spend this money to bring the energy use down or is it going to be replaced before we need to do this and uh, that's more of a master planning kind of decision that needs to be made. Okay so let's go are there any questions? I'm, I kind of flipped through quite a few here a few, a few screens here but uh, I think I'll just keep going unless there are any questions right now. I want to go into the the edit mode. I just showed you the view mode of how you get to the program requirements. It's basically going to be a URL link for anybody that signs up for the BIM storm. will give you access to everything that I've shown you on the screen here. Okay. So next... Oh, Young has some Skype questions. Okay. Let's see. For some reason I'm not seeing Okay, so we have, we have some questions coming in. Are these PowerPoints or PDFs available for printing or download? Um, this entire presentation is being recorded and we'll post it online just like we posted last week's presentation um, and you'll have access to that. What does the grid on the site plan represent? Uh, I'll go that into that later. The grid is just an arbitrary 100 foot grid which can be changed. Um, Assuming up is north, but the PVRAs may say otherwise. John, yes, that's exactly what we want to do. We want we made some. This is the kind of input we need from the teams. There's you know the the solar PVRAs were just arbitrarily placed like this because the parking was in this direction. We are we have um, specialists that are coming in that that focus on solar PVRAs, and we want your input to say, oh, what's a better arrangement for this? This is kind of an owner saying, well, I have a parking lot here, and I think I can put PVs here. Uh, but we need your input. This is the whole goal of the BIM storm is to get input from the teams. So is this using cloud technology? Yes, this is cloud-based building information modeling. This is live data and one of the things that drives a BIM storm are tools like this. So we have this year we're adding a new cloud-based tool from Gary Technologies called GTX and for many years we've been using this on NUMA system so the two combined are going to give us a, a range all the way from very quick planning studies like this to very detailed models that are used for design and construction. So the cloud-based aspect of this is what allows teams to collaborate in real time and I'll go next into how we're going to use these tools next in the process. Okay, so step one, uh, for anybody that wants to participate you need to sign up uh, for free. All of this is for, for free. We're being spo 
um, supported by sponsors. So if you go to vimstorm.com slash WAS or just let's start with vimstorm.com so you can see the front page and what's going on there. If you go to vimstorm.com the entry page looks like this. In the middle it says BIMSTORM Big BIM Bang. That's the name of this year's BIMSTORM. On the lower part of the page you'll see Twitter links and blogger links. Actually this blogger link will take you to the BIMSTORM blog which we will be posting updates to. We're going to try and keep email communication to a minimum. We want to try and use uh, uh, social media and blogs and, and the uh, Onuma system, the cloud system and Gary's GTX system to communicate. So we have a blog, we have a Twitter page which we'll be posting live tweets from as we uh, here the, here's the BIMSTORM Twitter page and that can all be accessed from the BIMSTORM.com page here. If you click on the middle here it actually opens up the BIMSTORM Washington DC page. This is where we're going to be at EcoBuild. At the very top you have links to last week's video that we taped. This week is going on right now so it says sign up but after we finish this in a day or two we'll, we'll post the animation here and here are future sessions so you can actually sign up right now for other sessions. We might change the date and time of these as we go on because we might add some new ones in between to interact with the teams. As you scroll down on this main page you'll see some more information. The most important one is the, the sign up page which is where? What happened to the sign up? Did we lose the sign up? That's interesting. Okay. Maybe got moved. Alright, so we have to get the sign up page back up here. Um, anyway, there's going to be a, a, a link to a sign up sheet that lets you sign up, sign up for the BIMSTORM itself. Um, and that will be posted here again soon. There's other links here from previous BIM storms. So anyway, we'll, we'll get more information to everybody from that page. Okay, so once you sign up, you'll get an email, and in that email you'll have a coupon to get access to the Onuma system, which is going to be the tool that we'll, we'll be using to communicate. The previous link that I showed, the previous interface that I showed you is you don't need access to the Onuma system, a login. You'll basically get a link and you'll be able to view everything, but you won't be able to edit data. So we'll go into the Onuma system next. You'll have your own login and password if I can remember mine here. We'll open up a page like this. These are two studios. We're going to be using the Fusion Studio for the Miracosta project and the Kaiser Permanente Studio for the Kaiser project. On the right side are um, plugins for Revit and SketchUp and other tools here so you'll be able to download those to get the BIM XML files that I talked about earlier. There was a question. I hear somebody online. No. Nope. Okay. And then we'll go into the Fusion BIM Storm, and this is a list of projects. I'm going to open up the Miracosta College project. So this is a little bit of a different view than what I showed earlier. This is an editor's view where you can actually go in and move things around. Um, I've logged in with my name. I'm setting up this project for all the teams to work on, so I can actually go in here and click Edit and go into edit mode and start moving things around. So if I want to add a new building or change the location of that, that uh, um, athletic building, I can do that right here. Um, so um, I won't go into the details of the interface here, but I want to show you how you would actually start a new project. So if you have access to the Onuma system, each team should make a new project. So at the very top here, it says Add New Project. I'm going to call this the Onuma team. Each team should have their own name, so I'm going to call this the Onuma team. This is for my own internal team, and I'll call this project number one. Each team should have a unique ID, so if you look at other team names that are up there, and we'll, we'll organize this with the teams to give you your team ID. And you'll get a, a blank project like this. If I open up the Miracosta master plan here, I'm going to duplicate the whole thing. So there's a, a button here that's like a duplicate button. You click on that and it asks you where would you like to place it. I'm going to place it in the Onuma project and these are about 50 buildings that exist on the campus. I'm going to just leave them all selected. There's 4, 4 million square feet of buildings listed here so I'm going to go ahead and 
proceed and copy those. Some of those are, are planned buildings, some of them are existing. So it'll take a, a minute or so here to actually duplicate that and set that up for me to get a view like this. So that's the basic kind of workflow. If you, if you sign up for um, the BIMSTORM, you'll get access to this view-only site. You'll get access to the full-blown Onuma site and the GTX um, server site as well, the GTX tools from Gary. And you'll get access to the actual projects. And then you'll be able to duplicate and create one scheme for yourself, or multiple schemes. So here's uh, the duplicate of the scheme. Now I've actually created a whole separate copy of the site for myself. And it's actually streaming in all the data here. And I'm in edit mode, so I have a right to, you can see at the top, that this is the Onuma project team. So I can actually go in and say, well, I really think that this gymnasium building maybe should, should not be here. Maybe it should be, there's simple tools here for moving and editing. So I click on the move or the stretch tool, for example, and I can actually move this building around and say, well, let's really, let's try and actually get a little bit further from the field and do this maybe. So I've just changed the configuration of this building. There's the existing building below. Uh, there's a lot more controls you can do here. You can actually um, start to see um, other background data. So if you go to the, uh, the background setting on the right, I have the uh, uh, master planning document from HMC as a landscape, but maybe I want to see the, um, the geology and hydrology map. So there's a, a, a snapshot from the HMC master plan of the geology and hydrology. It's an image in the background. And on the right side, I can also turn off the image completely and actually see the Google Earth um, satellite view. There was a question earlier about the grid. The grid is merely just an arbitrary 100-foot grid that's been placed on top of the entire property line, which can be changed. If I wanted this to be a different size grid, I could do this and actually save this, and it would update the grid. It's, it's merely a planning guideline to be able to quickly move and place buildings around. The intent of this is to, to quick blocking and stacking exercises. The buildings on the left are existing. This one's proposed. I can actually then start to look at the right side and say, show me the buildings color-coded as um, master planning scenarios to show what they are. So it's going to now color-code the buildings. The red ones are the, the proposed ones. So red is proposed building. As I start to shift this around, it updates all of the subsequent reports, the estimates if it's tied to the, the square footage, the, um, the floor plans, etc. So let's say that we, we really want to make this building a little bit skinnier and maybe even um, bump, create a bump here in the middle to, um, to show how it would actually uh, respond to the, um, to the bridge. Maybe it goes something like that. I'm being very quick here, but you can see that this is how a blocking and stacking exercise would, would happen. And if I look at this in 3D, it actually generates a 3D model on the fly of that change that I just made, including the rest of the buildings on the campus. So I can actually see there's a the campus in 3D. There are the, um, the buildings. Uh, the buildings, I want to color them based on time-based color. Start of construction, end of construction. There's a timeline at the top. We've assigned some preliminary start and end dates. So if I start scrolling through here, you can start to see the, the construction schedule showing up and the buildings appearing on the date. Red means they're under construction. So in, on July 16, 2016, this shows as being under construction. If I scroll back, you'll see it disappearing. If I scroll way back, you can see actually existing temporary buildings here. If you click on these temporary buildings, you see that they're temporary structures. And if I show that, then it shows that they're being demolished and then a new building is showing up there. So that's the idea behind all this, to be able to rapidly generate new views like this and uh, reports. So there's a new, new um, instructional building three that we just stretched out and made it longer, el elongated, and you can see the square footage and other start and end date of construction, etc. So there's a lot of data here. The, the, the intent is to be able to do quick analysis like that. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go inside this building, open up this instructional building here. And while I'm changing this, actually, all of the other views that others might be sharing with me would be um, able to see the same thing. Okay, we're getting some more questions here. If I already have an Onuma account, do I need to sign up for the BIMSTORM separately? No. If you already have an Onuma account, 
send me a, send us a BIM mail through your Anuma account or send us an email and say you'd like to be added to the uh, Fusion BIM Storm Studio and we'll give you access. If you don't have an Onuma account, we're giving uh, participants in the BIM Storm free access for two months to be able to get to the data. If you don't want to log into the Onuma system, you can actually click on the download links that I showed earlier. So right now I'm actually logged into the Onuma account to be able to do more blocking exercises here. Okay, so now I'm inside this building now. And remember I stretched it out here. I said I want to make it longer and not wider here. So these rooms obviously are not fitting anymore. In fact, let's turn off the site. Con site context is on. So if I zoom back, I actually see this building in relation to the rest of the site. But let's say let's turn off the site context because it's a little bit confusing with this existing building here. So I'm going to turn that off. And then just do a couple of quick things here. I want to be able to quickly say, let's move these building, uh, these spaces and get them to fit inside the building. So I'll grab the fence tool here, grab all these spaces and just move them back here and maybe even rotate them. Okay, that might work. And maybe we don't even need this part here. Notice how I'm being very rough. This is like sketching on paper, but it's actually generating a quick blocking model based on these pieces here. And maybe we really don't want the locker rooms on axis with the bridge, do we? Let's move these over here. So the importance of this is that you're not spending a lot of time fussing with details. You're trying to just get the basic blocking done to be able to say, okay, does this layout make sense? So maybe we need to have a corridor through here, so we need to place a space. And you can actually even add new spaces. The most important thing for the BIM storm, for this project, for the Kaiser project, for everything else. Owners asking for these spaces. This is the name of the space that owner is asking for, and this is a number of the space, room 127. We need to see that coming back to us so we can track the results, because otherwise we're looking at plans and redlining plans, looking at Excel files and seeing do we have the right square footage. Um, you'll notice that there's a couple of locks here, so if we if we go here and we say locked area, we can change even the size of these, it maintains a square footage. Um, and if we unlock it, it starts to break that square footage. So we could say, OK, well, I want to make this a little bit bigger. Now it's larger than what the program required to be. And one thing that I, that I will do is uh, as we're doing this, we can actually track. This is what we're going to do of the projects as they come in. We want to track and see um, how is it matching uh, the comparison between this program and what the owner was asking to, to design to. So if I go to reports and look at a delta comparison. I'm going to compare this to the Miracosta master plan and find the instructional building 3. This is basically the owner's requirement. We locked the original scheme and we're going to do a comparison between those two projects. So now if we compare this is a live report. That edit that I just made is showing us that I, I stretched out the fitness center training to 7,500 square feet. So I'm 15% over what the owner is asking for. This is why it's important to keep the room names and numbers correct. At least the room names and room numbers, actually. The, num the names you can actually change. OK, so if I go back to this and I refresh this screen, it actually even starts to show in the, um, in the floor plan as well. So there's the new floor plan. It's showing me that this one is. Uh, between 10 and 50, 20 percent over, and, and the same thing would happen here if I start to stretch this out. And the significance of this again is that as you start to, to work on the design, obviously you're going to start to resolve structure and walls and circulation. So things start to change, and you want to keep as much balance as possible between what the owner is asking for and what is being designed right here. Okay, so there are other tools that do this kind of like Trelligence is involved with this as well in this BIM storm. So they're, they're uh, available as well. The, the main point is that all of these tools, the goal between in the BIM storm is to be able to communicate with many different tools. So whatever tool you want to use, we want to make sure that that's as seamless as possible. And as we all know, that's not always a simple task to do. But we've been pretty successful by keeping things simple in the BIM storm and using open standards like IFC and using web services and using BIM XML and other structured standards to be able to co compare different ideas. So. This might be a model that the owner might have put quickly together, blocking and stacking, saying, well, we kind of think this is good. 
Let's take a look at that again in 3D and see what's going on. Pardon me? Okay. I got a, a notification that the sign up pit button is, is live again on the BIMSTORM site. For some reason, we did some edits recently and it went down. Okay, we have some more questions. Uh, can I use an iPad? Can an iPad be used to access the cloud? Yes, we have an iPad version of this that's available that you can access these plans as they're being developed on an iPad. Should participants be careful not to edit information on, ac on accident? Uh, no, we actually, once you duplicate this, you can edit as much as you want. That's the intent. I've duplicated the entire AmeriCosta plan and I'm actually editing the square footage of these spaces. What we want to see in the BIMSTORM, we call them train wrecks. We want to see things that might not make sense, like what somebody pointed out earlier about the PVs not being pointed in the right direction. We want to be able to get access to that type of information early on. The red is the footprint. If you had two ground floor footprints and a second floor was bridged over both, how is that displayed? If you have two ground floor footprints and the second floor was bridged over, I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm assuming it means that if you have two buildings on top of each other, how do you distinguish it? And obviously in real life you don't want to do that, so you'd move one off to the side. I could show that when I get back up to the site plan again. So this this particular view, it generates the, the 3D view of the new, new uh, building that we just blocked and stacked. Um, and if we say let's look at the space volumes and it's even color coding the spaces based on what's delta so green is over red is under and there is a square footage of the gymnasium it's showing 14,397 I remember it was supposed to be 15,000 just from memory but that's why it's red is because we're missing some space there and the same thing with all these other other buildings now notice these are kept very simple that's the whole intent here is that we haven't gone into Revit or SketchUp or ARCHICAD or the other BIM application. We're just doing a quick study to see while I'm talking to you guys just to see if this fits within the design scenario that we're planning. Okay, so let's leave this for a second and do one more thing here. So the export that I showed earlier, you don't you don't actually have to do the blocking and stacking in Onuma. It actually is, the reason it's good to do it here is because it's in the cloud you can actually collaborate and get input from others that are participating but you can quickly take this out to your tool of choice so the way that you do that earlier I showed you the links to BIMXML and IFC but you can also do that from here on the lower right there's an export button if I hit export from here and I say export to various formats so we have export to Revit, export to ArcCAD, export to SketchUp these exports basically take this model and take it off the server and onto your desktop and you can continue to work with let's do SketchUp for SketchUp and we can even do a building comparison color code so you can do different color coding of spaces I'm going to export that to SketchUp it just takes a few seconds and it creates a file on my desktop which I'll be able to open in SketchUp same thing with Revit you can say take it out to Revit 2011 2012 do you want the furniture if there's furniture inside there we haven't put any furniture but you can actually get furniture in there and a lot of other formats too. Kobe 2 it's building a Kobe file on the fly from this, the server uh, Excel, we can actually export the Excel file and say show me an Excel file of that. So it's creating a program document based on the edits that I just did. Okay, so let's see what, what was exported here. Okay, here's the Excel file I'm opening that I just saved. So this is an Excel file built on the fly from this model that I just edited. And let's take a look at this real quickly. So you see the, the name of the space here. These are the names of the spaces. The floor it's on, the space number, the area. The square, there's that square footage that we dropped from 15,000. The gymnasium, remember, we dropped up 15,000, so it's reporting the new square footage there. And a lot of other attributes. This is used for other BIM attributes like floor finish and you know, and engineering type of analysis can also be put in there. OK, so that's, that's Excel. Let's look at what happened with the Revit model, I mean the SketchUp model. So I'll launch into SketchUp. It works with the, the free or the paid version of, of SketchUp. You need a plugin. The plugin's available for free on the uh, Onuma site. In SketchUp, the plugin looks like this. If I import, go to SketchUp, File, Import, and go and find the XML file that I just saved. In the pull down, there's different 
formats. There's Onuma BIMXML. Import that. It changes the location because it has the right latitude and longitude. Everything has a GIS location, so it's going to build up a SketchUp model based on that new latitude and longitude. This building is placed off the ground here like this because it's, it's picking up the actual elevation that's set in the Onuma system. So you can actually, uh, if you want to, you can actually turn layers on and off. If, you don't, if that gets in the way, you can just say, okay, let's turn off the, uh, the tin, the spot elevations, slabs, site, etc. So now we have just the building. And these building elements are the same ones that we had just edited. So you see the bump that we had over there. And in SketchUp 2, it's actually, it's not just geometry, it has the actual data, so it's kind of structured as a, as a BIM. If you open up the outliner, you see that it came from Miracosta College, Building 3, Floor 1, and here are all the spaces that were in Miracosta. Now what you can do in SketchUp, this is for teams that are using SketchUp, you can actually use this as a basis for actually designing around these elements. You're working from the inside out, this is a program. Now you can go in SketchUp and start to um, even move things around and you know, design the walls and, and do other things and even take this back into the Onuma system. So that's one thing that we really want to focus on. If you're going to design this, we want to see the completed design in SketchUp as a SketchUp model. If you add spaces or delete spaces, we want to see the actual model coming in as a BIM XML file. We'll, we'll go into the, those details later. But essentially, we want to see a round trip. We want to see the data coming back in. The exact same thing would happen in Revit. Revit would get an, a model like this, or ARCHICAD, or Vectorworks, or other IFC applications. You can actually get the IFC or the BIM XML out into those tools, and you'd have the elements um, with um, the data related to it. OK. Um, I think we could leave that for a second. Any questions, Young, as we're waiting here? Did anybody else join that wants to say anything or join in on this? conversation. We have about 15 minutes, a little bit over 10 minutes actually left. Oh, the sign-up page. Yeah, let's see. Let's look at the sign-up page and make sure that everybody can get on. Okay, to sign up for the BIMStorm, there's a red sign-up button here when you go to BIMStorm.com. You click on that, and it brings you to this page. Very simple questions about who you are, your name, email address, what you do, and some agreements on how you want to how you you can participate. Saying that this is uh, not a real project, not a real contract. We're giving you access to the data, and you can use it for this BIM storm, and um, not a contract with the owner. The owners uh, are basically allowing us to access their data to work here. Okay, one very important thing on this process here. I, I just created this in my what's called a project and a scheme, uh, the Onuma project team scheme. I'm the only one that can see this. The first thing you need to do as soon as you start participating in the BIMSTORM, there's a share button on the upper right. It's almost like if you don't hit the share button, only you can see this. So I'm going to share this with the whole world, actually, and just say it with everybody that's, that's working in this studio with all users. I'll just give everybody access to this and save this so now it's accessible to everybody and as soon as I share it I can hit the well I, before I hit the BIM mail let me look at accounts up here on the upper right also it'd be great if you you can fill in account information of who you are so all the people that are involved in this studio right now in fact if I go to user groups I can see the teams that have already uh, set up access uh, to this it's the uh, uh, Food for Thought, VBN, Balfour Beatty, uh, Onuma, um, and uh, that's, yeah, three or four teams right now. If I click on my name here, my picture shows up like that. Um, if you click on the pencil, you can actually add other information here, um, who you are. You can decide what you want to share with others on the, on the team. So I, I can decide to share uh, my, a blogger site, for example, I have here and save that. And then now if I go back to the, uh, the full list and click on my name, 
there's a blogger button and it opens up my BIMStorm blog. So this is kind of a, a social media for BIM on the web, in the cloud, on a model server. It completely changes the way how teams work and it's actually been pretty exciting over the last two or three years to see teams collaborating on this. Question is how can we handle multi-story buildings? Okay, let's actually make this one a multi-story building. There's two ways of doing this. One is in the Excel. I can actually redefine it in Excel or I can just go on the left side here. This is the building I'm in right now. I can say add or delete a floor. Where do you want to add it? Above the first floor or below it? So it's added above. Do you want to copy all the spaces? Uh, you can either copy them, copy paste them, or let's just copy them all so we actually duplicate. We have multiple. Oops, it didn't work for a second. Okay, for some reason it's not working right now for me. I'll, I'll, let's go the other method. The other method would be to go back to the Excel file and say, I want to make these all on the second floor, these offices and these classrooms. I exported it from Anuma. I'm going to go back in here and let's see if this works. I must be doing something wrong here. but And I'm going to go import, update the space schedule. That's, that's even how you can actually, in fact, let's do one more thing. Let's go back to the Excel file. Let's say that the designer says, okay, this came from the owner, but I really think that we need to have a mechanical room. In fact, we do need to have a mechanical room on the first floor. And I need it to be 12 by 25. That's the minimum information that you need to start a new room. And so I've changed some rooms to the second floor. I've left these rooms alone. I've added this mechanical room. I'm going to call this, I'm going to change this room on the second floor to my office. So you can even change the, the name of the office. We're not going to touch the room numbers because that's what's being tracked. So we've added a new room number so I would suggest maybe we just use a thousand one number as a mechanical room just to keep track of that. And then we go back to here and we import and we say on this building I want to import space attributes. I'm going to choose my Excel file that I saved earlier in my downloads. There's my file right there. I'm going to choose that from my desktop, import it, and now it's confirming that it's added some spaces. There's a new space right there. It says you've added a new mechanical room. Yes, I want to do that. Okay, proceed. So Excel is a very quick way of reblocking and stacking things and even adding new spaces or creating a brand new building even. Uh, so there you can see that now it has two floors listed. And you see these spaces missing here. It moved them to the second floor. We see a new room there. It's called a mechanical room. We see the mechanical room. And we say, okay, we really want to move the mechanical room back here. And maybe it's not even big enough. We can still change our mind. We can say, oh, let's move this and make it bigger. So now, by doing this, this Excel file is no longer relevant. The first thing we do is throw away the Excel file because this we can always recreate the Excel file from this. So if we go to the second floor. Okay, any more questions as I'm doing this? We're getting close to the end here. We're going to go into more detail um, next week as well. Um, let's see, are there instructional videos for those new to the Onuma system? Yes, we will have links uh, from the uh, BIMStorm site. There's a lot of Vimeo videos that are available. Next question, so each team can submit any number of facility layouts or solutions for review. Yes, you can do as many as you want. In fact, we have two, bu two new buildings on the Miracosta site. We have uh, two buildings coming in from Kaiser Permanente. And even if you wanted to adjust some of the requirements and come up with different ideas, that's fine too. We, we, we leave this pretty open, although we really like to somehow have it grounded on what the uh, Miracosta campus is trying to do. Um, how does it handle multi-story? Okay, we did that. To add another team I ideas, how would I just copy this team scheme and then add, just add any idea? Yeah, you can copy paste from if another team wants to share a building I'll do that real quickly before we get off here um, just this building here just real quickly here because we added this building here's here are the spaces on the, the second floor that we moved up and here you can see the ghost floor below and if I look at this in 3d we'll start to uh, actually see the, um, the the view like that too okay let's go back up to the site plan 
the question is how do we add uh, another team's building um, you can actually if, as soon as you hit the share button it means like you, you have access to other teams projects so here's here's the building that I just added but let's say I want to go and grab I can either add a new building or let's say I want to go and find a building that I know somebody else has designed that I want to add to this site um, there are ways of um, going in and saying search through the other projects add that building and they'll basically go and grab it from another site I don't think I have enough time to actually do that right now but um, another question is I'm interested in the commissioning phase of this project how will I acquire the equipment information that will need to be commissioned waiting for other users working in the design phase to create design data for equipment okay this is actually an interesting question Th this BIM storm we're actually going to be focusing on not only the design work that we're doing right now but actually the construction and commissioning and operations so the other projects that are coming in from LACCD that are currently under construction there's a real project under construction at Mission College which is going to be, share, be sharing its data and there's a real project under construction at Kaiser with Kaiser Permanente that we're going to be sharing the data which will have that type of data in it so it's going to get to the more nitty-gritty details about the buildings but we do want to see how you would actually go about using this for commissioning and one workflow is to take Kobe data out in that open standard format and pull it into your tool of choice or pull out tables of data about equipment we'll have that as well can we get the Excel sp spreadsheets for import yes you would yes we will be posting that but for this project these the Excel spreadsheet import that I just showed is the manual process this data is actually coming from the foundation for California Community Colleges so they actually have this um, we're, we're working on this this week actually where we have this PDF that shows the requirements this is just a PDF if you receive this PDF you'd have to go through and manually type this out we're going to be feeding this in through web services live from the foundation's server from the Foundation for California Community Colleges and it will appear as a blocking model automatically on on the site it'll appear as a, as a red blob on the site that you can take and work with so you can import Excel files but the more powerful way is actually to just go and subscribe to that requirement that just got released by Miracosta College for this BIM storm so it'll be live data coming in okay uh, we're getting close to the end here where um, we encourage you to um, uh, look at what's happening on the uh, the BIM storm site uh, bimstorm.com uh, join future um, BIM, uh, webinars which we'll have next week um, look at uh, what teams are doing sign up for the website <laughs> follow our blog there's a lot of things to do you don't have to touch everything but you can kind of follow and see what's going what's going on in these projects by uh, by logging in and seeing uh, watching the, the the BIM storm site uh, let's see finish off with this okay we saw that I think that's it right let's let me do one quick check here to see if anything else came in while I was talking because we had some teams online that were possibly working on things okay I don't see anything here but as teams start publishing their projects we'll start seeing them appearing here the project I just worked on today is this one right here the Onuma team project I've shared it so anybody has access to it will be able to view it online. Okay, so this is Kimono Numa. Um, next week we'll have uh, more participants online uh, from Kaiser and from uh, possibly Gary Technologies. We'll be talking about their new uh, server. It's really exciting to be able to connect to their system as well. Um, and we encourage you to log in and find out what's going on. And uh, we look forward to everybody's participation. We'll be signing off. Unless there are any final questions? No, we're done. Okay, thank you very much. Signing off. Right as the webinar was ending today at 12.53, I received a BIM mail from the Onuma system saying Michael, Sk Michael Skarmick has sent a message regarding this following project. It looks like Michael picked up on the program requirements as I was doing the webinar and actually did a quick study uh, to show in ARCHICAD the same elements now with uh, exterior wall and proposed window locations. This is just happening within a few minutes as we were uh, sharing the project. So it just, just shows the power of being able to collaborate in real time uh, as things uh, move forward in the project.